of the Audi engines and coming up with a couple of other people the idea to run a diesel uh, literally over a beer, uh, one of whom was part of, uh, of Shell, who were part of the team at the time, and they literally said, yep, yeah, let's give it a go, and they came up with a 12-cylinder diesel engine. Why would you want to race a diesel? Well, they just marbleized the opposition and indeed forced the opposition to also go to diesel because that's what Peugeot did. And then they won in 2009. In the latter years, uh, recently, of course, there's been hybrid as well as the Riley and Scott dumps the clutch, the Mark III car from uh, 1995 and 1999 disappears away into the distance. Bob Riley and Mark Scott, who were formed the company that made the Riley and Scott cars. They were Daytona 24-hour winners, 96, 97 and 99. But Christensen back in the Le Mans winning Bentley. Just look at that whooshing down the Lavant straight. The whine of the gearbox, the whistle as it pierces through the air. Turbochargers then spooling up to, to give the Dane the big kick in the back. The car that had pole position won the race by two laps. The sister car that is also here at the 77 members meeting is alongside it in the, uh, the main paddock behind our commentary position. The big howl from the 10 cylinders of the Judd behind the Delara as it rushes past our commentary box really igniting the atmosphere yet further. Now, what about the Peugeot? The number seven Peugeot here. Nick Manassian driving it here this weekend, but the car, the sister car to that that won Le Mans in 2009 with David Brabham, Alexander Wurtz and Mark Genet. I read only the other day that David Brabham rarely had his family at a race meeting, but he had his family at Le Mans in 2009 and he won the race what a brilliant story what a brilliant pinnacle to his career Peugeot uh, the uh, the year after in 2010 had the most bizarre of races that I don't think any manufacturer will suffer such a fate ever again there was a a, 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 a symptom of the air being cooler, the engine then ingested more oxygen, so there was a bigger bang in the cylinders. There was less pickup because there was a difference in tyre, so there was less pickup so the radiators didn't block so much and the intercooler didn't block so much. So everything went to the car going just another four, five, six kilometers an hour faster on every straight on every lap. The corner speed was also faster on every corner on every lap and what that then meant was that the engine was, hang on a minute, I'm running a little bit further out of my envelope than I was designed to do and what I've done on the dyno and all of the Peugeots failed with the Conrad failure. All of them. Uh, it was the most bizarre of Le Mans. But coming back to the R8, as I said, a victor in uh, 2000. Not just a victor, but a 1-2-3, a complete clean sweep of the podium for Audi in 2000 and in 2002 and in 2004. The R8 would do about 217 miles an hour down the Bolsan Strait, competing all over the globe in... Uh, the American Le Mans series as well and in total it's entered 79 endurance races and it won 63 of them. 79 races, 63 victories. Now that is a hit rate. The pop and bang of, on the overrun of the Dallara as it rattles through Madwick Corner, the PlayStation car really being let loose as it makes its way around Goodwood 
Can you imagine the speed of these cars around here were it not for the chicane and the pace car? Another world. But that's what Le Mans about. It's a high speed race, the slowest corner of which being Arnage before the drag down to the Porsche curves once more. OK, it's not Sam Hancock in the car. I was just a little bit fooled from the previous shot. Uh, Martin Short, I'm sure, uh, stretching the car's legs. Great to catch up with him in the paddock here with the, uh, the big Delara, telling me about how he purchased the car and previously he'd been to Le Mans as a, running a TVR. And he said, well, I bought these cars. I can surely just enter Le Mans. And the ACO were not so keen on somebody jumping up right to the top class but he'd done well at Sebring and literally the management from ACO came over, shook his hand and gave him a bit of a nod and a wink and a pat on the shoulder as if to say, you're in, and he was. Martin Shorts with the Royal Centre car actually went on to lead Le Mans only for half a lap as a privateer, only for half a lap. And by the time he got back to the pit garage, all of the journalists, the TV cameras, the crew were all huddled around him and he got out and he said why are they all here and the team had to tell him you led Le Mans I mean what an achievement as a privateer and as we all know with the uh, current LMP1 hybrid regulations it's uh, a little bit out of reach but with the hypercar regulations coming in in a couple of years time if manufacturers sign up and uh, and uh, have an opportunity to win. Maybe that will also give an opportunity for some privateers to sign up. Uh, well, let's see. How Toby, Toby, if I can interject, Martin Short, a fascinating character, started his racing career in a Martlet kit car that was built here at Goodwood by David Martin, who was uh, Ian Raby's period Formula One mechanic. So a link to Goodwood for Martin Short. There you go. I've raced against a Martlet up the hills as well. Mark has, of course, been the county bird of Sussex. OK, well, as Marino Franchitti powers away with the Alpine over the start-finish line, really getting into its stride. He's chasing the, uh, the little Lola, the Lola that ran at Le Mans in 2009. There's Emmanuel Pirro. He's in the Panos. The Panos Roadster. David Brabham drove that car. Leitzinger drove it as well. Just look at the seating position. I mean, that really is the biggest caterum you'd ever see. Everything's all in front of you, isn't it? David Brabham was so excited to have driven it uh, yesterday for the first time in, what, 20 years. And I uh, was with David and Lisa last evening after dinner and uh, gave some great stories from his racing career. Absolutely fascinating guy to be with. Really lovely couple. Running with its original Visteon sponsorship on the side of the Panos. It finished 7th and 11th at Le Mans 20 years ago. Only eight chassis built or retired at the end of 2003. We thought it was like a Malak with a loud engine noise. It is a Malak. You're absolutely right, yes. And the driver on the wrong side. Driver on the wrong, yeah. <laughs> Bell housing a little bit further forward than a Malak, probably. So the Lola's just finding itself a little bit of space. Oh, it's coming to the pits, actually. Uh, the Lola that's recently been restored with the, uh, with the Judd uh, mounted behind it. 2009 car ran at Le Mans with Andrea Piccini, Thomas Biaggi and Matteo Bobby. Uh, my uh, esteemed journalistic friend and colleague Sam Smith, who was working for Lola at the time, says that was quite a bunch of guys to go racing with at Le Mans. Proper mad hatters, proper mad hatters. But uh, Sam himself, even though he was on the PR side, you know, got his hands dirty, helped finish off the car and uh, helped get it to Le Mans. Is it having a bit of trouble to get going again? Hopefully Julian can uh, fire it again. Yes, it does. Use the opportunity here under sunny skies at the Good Mother Circuit as he slams the door. Pat on the back. He could give it a push. 
and away we go. Dump the clutch maybe a bit far easier for the uh, for the 10-year-old car. Pretty car. I know I keep going on about it, but pretty car. You know, Drayson had the car uh, with the green colour scheme that also ran at Le Mans. Yes, and then converted to fuel, electric power. Yeah, exactly. Did he run, run some biofuel to start with? Then yeah, to that's right, that's right. Uh, Lord Drayson. He went to school with Jeff Blocks. And Blocks has been so helpful towards the, uh, the, bro the Bloodhound Land Speed Record project. Here are a couple of engines, Andy and Richard. I fancy the Riley and Scott. I think they're absolutely awesome. Really thuggish sports racing car. That's Nigel Greensaw in the Danker car. That is absolutely an original colour scheme. It's very simple, isn't it, under the, uh, under the skin. It's terribly complicated about it, but they were just really effective. Well, as I said, you know, being victorious at Daytona three times in four years. The Starlight car has been recently recommissioned and repainted and restored. But yes, late 90s Americana. Yes, please. In the paddock, there is a Porsche 919 hybrid, the 2015 victor of Le Mans. One Le Mans 2015, 2016, 2017 to make it 19 victories at Le Mans for Porsche. Three victories on the trot after the four entries that they made at Le Mans with the 919 hybrid from 2014 onwards. Mark Webber's red overalls were the overalls that he wore in 2014 for that race. Now here is the Reynard Chrysler, uh, Florent Moulin, uh, Jean Carles Redel, uh, sharing the driving for this car that's 19 years old. Adrian Reynard having a hand in the car with Nigel Stroud in the design of the car, I should say, and really quite ahead of its time, arguably. Jean Charles Redelet is, and he's the son of um, Jean Redelet, who is the founder of Alpine. He probably is. May well add up. Under the um, under that Renault umbrella, a brand of uh, Renault and uh, the new road cars, which hark back to the glorious uh, A110s, are doing really well, aren't they? They are indeed. They are indeed. And uh, everybody says who's driven them, they're just on another level. On another level. And and not ridiculously expensive. No. At all. You know, no. As, as those sort of cars go on the affordable um, radar. It's very affordable. So there you have it. The Bentley, the Peugeot, the Audi R8, the Dallara going over the line. What a view. Just sheer speed. And it is speed for Le Mans nowadays. Every lap is flat out. You have to drive absolutely on the limit but certainly not over it. You cannot afford, you know, a pit stop out of sync. Not easy to do the full 24 hours without an unscheduled stop in some shape or form. Can be done by the, the big works teams, but for LMP2 nowadays, you really got to be very lucky to have a clear run. One of the things Christensen said about the, uh, the Speed 8 Bentley was coming from an open car with the R8 then into the uh, the Bentley with a closed car there's a lot of, lot of distortion through the windscreen and he found that quite difficult to get his head around that PlayStation Dallara the colour scheme is just wonderful shades of martini arguably in it you know the light blue the dark blue the red the swooshes down the side just set it off perfectly